Fort Phil Kearney was under attack from the moment the first soldier's bedroll touched the ground. Built in the summer of 1866, it was one of three forts to protect travelers along the Bozeman Trail. Colonel Carrington rose up through the military ranks and administrative positions during the Civil War. He never saw combat. The Sioux, Cheyenne, and Arapaho harassed him constantly, attacking travelers, supply wagons, wood details, and anyone that wandered too far away from the rest and Carrington's command was wearing down from the constant hit-and-run tactics. Food and ammunition rations were low due to attacks on the supply wagons. The horse herd was thinning down from the constant thefts. Patrols were constantly going out to assist travelers and escort supplies to the forts. Captain Fetterman had distinguished himself in battle during the Civil War, and in November 1866 he was temporarily stationed at Fort Phil Kearney on his way to a command of his own. His fighting skills, leadership, and wartime victories naturally contributed to his underestimating Native Americans' primitive fighting resources. In the first week of December, Lieutenant Bingham was killed while chasing away warriors over Lodge Trail Ridge. Colonel Carrington then issued a standing order for soldiers not to go over the ridge. On December 19, 1866, Sioux warriors attacked civilian woodcutters that were down at Piney Creek. Captain Powell rode out and chased the warriors away. Two days later, on December 21st, under similar circumstances, Captain Fetterman changed tactics and led 50 infantry and two civilians out the flank to Sioux and cut them off from retreating. Crazy Horse and his half-dozen warriors saw the movement and were able to slip past and then taunt the soldiers who pursued them over the ridge. Lieutenant Grumman's cavalry was sent out to assist. Traversing the frozen and snow-covered trail was perilous. Lieutenant Grumman's 27 mounted soldiers were 100 yards ahead of Captain Fetterman's infantry when Grumman recklessly dropped down off the ridge. What Captain Fetterman saw next was a veritable hornet's nest of warriors boiling out over the ridge. The trap had been set and sprung. Exposed on open frozen ground, unable to go to the rescue of Grumman's cavalry, Fetterman's infantry was quickly surrounded on three sides. Some of the infantry with the civilians were able to retreat a short distance back up the trail. The two civilians with repeating rifles were able to take positions behind some rocks and lay down some quick and effective cover as Captain Fetterman tried to control the retreat of his infantry. The battle lasted 20 minutes in what Red Cloud Sioux called the hundred in the hand. Afraid that his fort was now vulnerable and would be overrun, Colonel Carrington sent out the civilian scout Portuguese Phillips on Carrington's best horse to race for reinforcements from Fort Laramie, 150 miles southeast. A half-dead Phillips stumbled into Laramie's officer's Christmas ball three days later. The forts along the Bozeman Trail were abandoned a year and a half later, now that the Transcontinental Railroad was near completion. The Sioux burned the vacant forts to the ground.